Caro, the early game yesterday saw um, the embattled Bombers, at least with injuries, get over the line against the Adelaide Crows. But there was a fairly significant story that is now emerging involving one of the biggest names in the game. There is. Before I explain it, let's just have a listen at some of the um, noise that accompanied Taylor Walker's four goals. The Ford's coming back up at the kicker, and it was Taylor Walker that he was able to do that. Now, he is at his best within range. Yeah, well done. It's in the past. And last week to get them the win, Walker, one, two. The pay doesn't matter. Taylor Walker kicks his first. So Craig Kelly, who has a son playing, was at the game. Craig Kelly, the very well-known, in fact, runs the management company that manages you, Matthew, yep. um, and manages Taylor Walker. Craig Kelly got um, embroiled in, an, in a verbal altercation with a supporter who was abusing, verbally abusing Taylor Walker. Um, he, the AFL integrity officer who was at the game got involved and spoke with Craig Kelly, left comfortable that Craig had been provoked. The supporter, I'm told, was um, booing Taylor Walker and using some filthy language. Craig Kelly did say to this supporter, Taylor Walker is not a racist. But when I spoke to Craig this afternoon, he pointed out that some of the language this man was using was absolutely disgusting. He was using this language around young kids, around women and men who didn't want to hear it. And I must say, I've been at the footy recently and some of the language is just disgusting. Yep. I mean, there was a blue at the Richmond Bulldogs game that got quite out of hand behind goals at one point um, the previous night at the MCG and people were rejected from the ground. So don't want to see that creeping back, but just fascinating to how nasty and how heated it did get from one particular supporter that Craig Kelly felt moved to get involved in the AFL integrity then spoke to him but was satisfied that he'd been provoked. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a fascinating story and Taylor was, was crucial to the game. He played amazingly well. He nearly dragged his team over the line. Earlier in the week on the Wednesday, Tanya Hosh, the AFL executive, had some strong comments about what she was expecting from Taylor. And I hope there's some humility um, that goes along with his re-entry into the game after um, admitting, and it was important that he did admit, to racism. So this off the back, and strong words from Tanya Hosh. Very strong. Um, the AFL's most senior executive in charge of diversity and Indigenous matters. Um, look, <laughs> Some of the stuff by the Crows social media team, and it's been spoken about, and, you know, Matthew Nix was forced to speak about it before the game, and Tanya was maybe referring to this, but the, the tweet was really unfortunate, when, which said he's back, you know, with the sunglasses emoji. Mm. Um, a couple of weeks before the tweet that said he's back, there was... Um, uh, I think of Hungry Jacks. A promotion for, yeah, for, for Hungry Jacks. Which um, they have taken off their social media as well. This is what... Um, well, th yeah, this is the one that's been taken off. So another social media blue, you'd have to say. Mm. From the, I'm, I'm amazed that a, a sophisticated AFL club would make such rookie errors. And um, you've got to say that Matthew Nix felt the same way when he said this. Oh, yeah, disappointed. That was a miss. That was a big miss. And we, you know, we're, we're people, people make mistakes. But that was a miss. Yeah, I mean, he admitted it was a miss. I think that was the right thing to do. Can I just ask you, as someone that's very central in South Australia, how did you feel about Taylor being booed, given everything that we know? I felt fine about it. Yeah. I, I was expecting him to be booed. We see players... Do you think he would have expected it? Yeah, of course he would. He, yeah. he said one of the most vile things you can say to another human being. Of course he would have expected to be booed and he will continue to be booed. Now, there's a line there and you've spoken about vile language in the crowd. Caro, we all understand where that line is, but if you're a paid-up footy supporter, you're allowed to boo. I mean, Collingwood booed Joel Selwood. People have been booing great players for different reasons for a long time, uh, and I think yeah. he will continue to be booed. It's just an interesting circle that we've arrived at, Caro, where it wasn't, doesn't feel like that long ago in the game, but we were talking about booing Adam Goods and how dreadful that was, and now the booing is directed at someone who, you know, has since apologised publicly for making a racist comment. I think that in, in, in reference to Tanya Hodge, there, there was su sufficient humility. I mean, he wasn't running around pumping. He was pretty happy. He's allowed to celebrate goals. So yeah. He's back playing footy. He's so done yeah. his penance. Do you think he gets booed then for the rest of his career? Oh, or I, think it'll, I think it'll, people. it'll, temp, anyway. it'll temper down. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, at some stages he will. And it'll bob up from time to time. I was at that game yesterday and I thought the Bombers' rucks were terrific. Phillips and Draper. And this was the one area where they really got the better of Adelaide. It was a great tactic from Blake Carousella and Ben Rutten. Because I wasn't sure where Phillips and Draper fit. Because they're not natural forwards, Lordo. But... 
Draper started on the bench, Phillips started in the ruck. At about the seven minute mark of each quarter, they came on and at every opportunity, we'll take a look at the vision, they just pushed forward and they marked the ball on Riley O'Brien. Clearly there was a message to the Essendon players to look for them. Then when Himmelberg went in there as the second, they capitalised on that. I just thought they were terrific and in the end, probably the difference in the game was this one stoppage goal, which we'll show in a second. This one here where Riley O'Brien is exhausted. He misses the ball with three minutes to go and, and, and there's a goal. So the value of having two rucks, I think he's going to be more and more important the longer the year goes on. Well, it went away from it, didn't it? Now, yeah. with Gorn and Jackson, I think what they're going to do for the next five years might re revolutionise the game where you could have two to try and match Melbourne over the next few years.